for example, as I told, if you're trying to search for your wallet and it's lying on bed or sofa somewhere, the room is so smart and the lights and the entire equipment is so smart that the wallet will be, you know, only the light on the wallet will start falling. Just imagine. So if the car breaks down, he doesn't have to do anything. All he has to do is report bug. He just has to click report bug. The data, the entire error log goes to the uh, manufacturing unit wherever the debugging is happening. Within 15, 20 minutes, you know, they create a patch and they reprogram your car and it starts moving. That's the kind of technology. So that is pretty. Well, uh, about Mr. Suresh, Mr. Susurla Suresh is the CEO of Startoon Labs. He's an electronics engineer by training, passion and profession. He's an alumnus of Indian Institute of Technology, Madras and Institute of, uh, Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta. He is currently the co-founder, CEO and managing director of Startoon Labs Private Limited, a two-year-old medtech R&D company based out of Hyderabad, Telangana. The company is incubated by VHub, an initiative of Government of Telangana and is also awarded the big grant from Birak, Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. Before establishing his own company with his wife Maitreyi as a co-founder in 2017, he worked in the core industry for more than 10 years at various MNCs and startups uh, in a very wide-ranging roles. He is the co-author of five international publications co-inventor of four filed patents and is an independent author of a book on electronics and communication engineering which is sold worldwide. He has been a speaker at various national and international platforms. His vision is to build world-class medical and high-quality products in India and export them to the needy nations of the world. Mr. Suresh, I welcome you onto the stage please. A big round of applause for Mr. Suresh. He's been a great... Uh, good morning, friends. Yeah, my name is Suresh. So much light here. Not able to see anywhere. I'm not able to see anywhere. First of all, thank you. Uh, thanks to the Alien Fest team uh, for inviting me for the third time in a row. Thanks to you know Manoj and his entire team, and uh, thanks to Srikant. <laughs> yeah. So a great uh, work that is happening uh, since uh, a few years now, and I'm I'm quite sure that. Uh, it's uh, helping a lot of students uh, to see what is happening in the world, get, uh, as a professor told, you know, uh, learn from the experiences that people have uh, already experienced and not make any more mistakes, which uh, we have already, uh, you know, done earlier. So with this, I would love to just start off this topic. I've been requested to speak on uh, IoT, uh, automation, and uh, the future, and what are the various technologies that are there. Before that, I would just uh, give a brief introduction about me. Uh, I am basically, oh sorry. Yeah, I am basically an engineer uh, with the electronics and communication degree. That's always has been my passion. And uh, since childhood, I have been working only on electronics, played with electronics. So uh, that's what uh, you know. my parents say that I was uh, you know, born as an electronics engineer. Even my grandfather wanted me to do electronics. So, and uh, I pursued MS uh, at IIT Madras uh, by research, which is a three years uh, degree, and uh, published a lot of uh, papers. And I also pursued business management from uh, Indian Institute of Management, uh, Calcutta, with around uh, overall experience, including my academic research and uh, industrial research. I have worked for around uh, 15 years now, and uh, worked with different companies like the Tata Motors, Siemens. I also worked at the Electrical Engineering Department of IIT Madras for around uh, three years. Worked at Academy of Robotics in Vishakhapatnam, and also Ducurate Technologies in Hyderabad, where I uh, worked as the Vice President Innovations. I'm a co-author of six international publications in my career till now, and co-inventor of around four patents, uh, and author of a book on electronics and communication, which is uh, very useful for GATE, uh, BEL, ISRO, and other competitive exams. Uh, so with this, I would love to go ahead. How many of you know, I'm not able to see, yeah, how many of uh, you know about IoT? Please raise your hands. Good, only these people? Okay, 
See, I'll just give a quick intro and I would also love to uh, share with you the recent trends in IoT and the upcoming technology so that it helps you understand uh, you know, how to proceed in your education and what all subjects you should definitely you know, work hard upon, what kind of practical things you should do in your curriculum uh, during your engineering. So quick brush up, basically IoT stands for Internet of Things and I must mention here that uh, the upcoming uh, technologies IOMT which is uh, you know they have added a medical term there because you should understand this because a uh, lot of hospitals in the country and around the world are uh, having a lot of medical devices which are all IOT enabled and uh, it's the upcoming trend so you know, I would love to focus on that and the use of such technology and what is the importance. Why should devices be connected to each other? That's very important to understand and I want to focus on that. And basically just a quick intro like you know IoT is basically there are so many machines around in an industry. All the machines are embedded with some kind of sensor or the other which gathers the required information from the system. And then after a basic processing of the signals it is transmitted to the uh, uh, you know, cloud via the internet, which can be a wireless protocol or a you know, wired module like LAN and uh, you know wireless like the uh, uh, Wi-Fi and all. LoRa, LoRa is another technology which is coming. Zigbee. So there are different kinds of wireless protocols where the acquired signal is sent to the you know basically processed and then sent to the server in the remote location where further signal processing is done, analysis of the data is done. And then the process data is brought back to the uh, you know end user. This is what is basically you know a connected devices. Now, when multiple such devices start talking to each other, they are all on a network, and then you call it as the Internet of Things. And as I told, I will also focus on medical uh, devices because my company my company is two years old, as uh, Shrikan told. Uh, we are a sustainable uh, company right now. We are, uh, uh, we already have a product and uh, it's there in the market and we have uh, four hospitals currently using the product. I want to focus on that and tell you why it is so important to have a IoT enabled product. Okay, so I have some case studies. So different areas where internet of, so that was a quick introduction of internet of things for people who did not know. It was very top level, it's a very deep subject in itself. But different areas are like in industrial automation, it is very, very useful. In hospitals, it's very, very useful. Even in homes, it is very, very useful. And I will discuss these three case studies uh, uh, in, a, in a very quick level. And if you have any queries, we can always discuss further. So I have been attending a few conferences in the past few months at various places in the country where I have seen how Internet of, Internet of Things has played a very important role in process optimization. So it's not about, see, there was a time when it's about only understanding how you can connect devices and how the devices can talk to each other. But one thing you should understand is this buzzword IoT and all these things, you know, you should understand why is it needed. The most important reason is you can use the data that is connect, you know, collected from so many machines or so many devices and process them and understand how things are happening in an ecosystem. For example, in a manufacturing plant, when there are so many machines uh, you know, operating 24 cross 7, you need to understand the performance of every machine, the throughput of every machine. Throughput is basically how many you know, hours it is working and what is the outcome from that machine in a very, in a very uh, crude way. So to, in any manufacturing company, see any company is into business. And when you come to business, it's all about making profits, basically revenues converting to you know, you know uh, profits. So you need to keep a track of how the machines are performing, how the people are performing. So it's always important if you can connect uh, the sensors, required sensors to different machines and get the data to a central server where an analyst will see how things are happening. It always improves the process um, automation and finally leading to profits and reduced cost of operation of the company. So as you can see in the slide, there's so many machines, so many people. How do you track which person is doing what? It's very difficult. If you don't have a log of uh, which person is, or which, pro which uh, uh, 
item that is being manufactured is staying at which place in the manufacture center for how much time? See, suppose you have some raw material and it is lying in the warehouse for long duration of time. It's not good because you're losing a lot of money when the raw material is lying. It should be processed and sold. That's where the business you know, is profitable. So you can actually monitor each and every machine that's there in the manufacture plant. You can also monitor how the people are working you know, by putting some sensors uh, that they wear or it's a visual uh, camera and you know, which does data analysis and you see how the human resources are working. Okay, so once you know the entire details, you can actually optimize the process. So IoT, one of the most important applications is not about just connecting. You should know why you are connecting and one of the most important business aspects that has been happening in the past two years in the industry is uh, you know optimization of processes in industry with the technology of uh, internet of things and then one of the latest trends i was in a conference uh, apollo conference where i was a speaker uh, there i saw one gentleman who spoke about the connectivity of all the medical devices in the facility they have done a pilot test right now where different devices have been connected to a central server and one of the main reasons for that was there was a machine which has to be moved from one place to other, one place to other, one place to other because of, you know, because of lack of equipment possibly. They wanted to understand how well the machine is being used, how effectively it is being used or is it lying somewhere. So in this way, that was one thing. Second thing is sometimes you just turn on some machines and leave them, which is a huge wastage of electricity. So you can monitor how much of current is, you know, how much of power is being consumed by each of the medical device in the entire hospital. There are hundreds of machines. So if you cumulatively see the power consumption of unused machines, it is huge. So what I'm trying to say is there are so many machines there and the, 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 the core person wants to see how the, op, you know, how the operations are happening in a hospital, which is coming to huge costs. How can you reduce the cost? Because once these costs are reduced, you know, it has a direct impact on the patient's uh, cost. See, the, the hospitals are charging so much of money because they are also incurring a lot of money, a lot of cost due to a lot of wastage possibly. So how optimization can be done in hospitals? This is another very, very interesting area which now a lot of hospitals in the country are trying to adopt. One of them is uh, what I heard from them is, you know, is uh, Apollo Hospitals which is doing that. There are many more hospitals which are trying to follow this to reduce the overall costs, okay? And third one which most of you might be knowing, telehealth is a very, very important aspect. Telehealth is basically monitoring the patients and even sometimes treating and diagnosing the patients from a very remote location. You'll be shocked to know that our, around 70 to 75 percent of uh, the doctors in the entire country are only in the urban areas. And that too, when you say urban areas, it's in the top eight and ten cities of the country. This is a very uh, crude statistics, but what I want to focus is there's a lack of doctors in the country and it's very, very important to keep the health of the you know, uh, rural people good because the food that is coming to us is coming from them. If they're not healthy, we'll be, uh, you know, we'll be the sufferers. So telemonitoring and telehealth is a very, very upcoming aspect and a lot of medical products are being developed in the country right now in this area where the devices are equipped with uh, IoT uh, technology and the data from the patients can be you know, uh, sent to a remote uh, doctor who is in a city and uh, he can be given instantaneous advice on how to uh, treat. So telemedicine is where individual uh, devices are also equipped with IoT technology and they transfer the data uh, to the server. So these are some of the aspects and uh, uh, before going to the convergence of tech, I have around three and a half minutes more. Uh, before going to the convergence of tech, I wanted to uh, tell you that you know home automation has been a buzz for a long time. But let me tell you, friends, that uh, home automation of turning on, turning off light, you know, all these are gone days. I was actually hearing to a person who was talking like you know the the IoT has nowadays the IoT should bring not technology, it's user experience. And there is a company who is building a uh, product where which is IoT enabled. Like if you are searching for your wallet and suppose it is lying on a bed, 
the home is so smart it's not about you entering the ro room and you know fan turning on light that's all you know old age days the iot and the artificial intelligence kind of thing with the algorithms has come so far that people started developing technologies like for example as i told if you are trying to search for your wallet and it's lying on bed or sofa somewhere the room is so smart and the lights and the entire equipment is so smart that the wallet will be you know only the light on the wallet will start falling just imagine this uh, and it's so easy to search because you're looking for a wallet so this is about iot and the other uh, technologies not being implemented just like technology and you know connection of devices but the value that such a technology brings into the company whether it's automation healthcare or whatever even in education management systems it is being used now how much of value it adds and uh, how much of convenience it brings and uh, how much of most important aspect nowadays by the time you graduate remember one thing user experience will become a very very important uh, uh, requirement it's not just the technology you should build technology which has great user experience and the ex and the uh, example that i gave which is about you know finding a wallet in a room just imagine the room is so smart that only the focus goes on to the on the wallet and you just pick it up even without uh, searching it much that kind of and it's a awesome user ex uh, user experience okay finally coming to the convergence which i should focus on uh, in a very quick way so 2 3 years back or maybe 4 years back it was about integrating sensors into the systems and bringing the devices together we have achieved that the entire world has achieved and india has also come very far in that we have achieved it so connecting the devices is done which comes in almost in the you know uh, when you connect the devices you start creating data earlier there was no data for example i'm just giving a vague example this this speaker or this tv they were not talking to each other now you have iot enabled wifi enabled tvs where the you know tv is relaying uh, wirelessly to the speaker tv knows what i want to speak and i can communicate to change the slide whatever so many things are happening so once you have iot enabled devices now you are able to generate data once you have data with you you can use data for the analysis purpose and that's where you know the predictive analysis comes predictive analysis is all about understanding when you have some data what is the chance that uh, uh, something you know uh, is is supposed to happen for example you have a engine a uh, vehicle uh, you have an engine in the vehicle and uh, vehicle has gone for uh, you know almost uh, you know uh, 30000 kilometers there is a way to understand you know how after how long time the engine might fail that is what is predictive analysis and i don't know if you guys know that all the uh, uh, engines of the airbus and all they're all equipped with a lot of sensors and every moment when the when the aircraft is flying the data is relayed to the uh, to the ground station for processing so every engine on this planet you know for our aircraft is monitored nowadays even the cars are being uh, you know equipped with so many sensors you get the data and actually you can predict even before the engine fails or even before the car break down breaks down you know the manufacturer comes to know that the car is is you know possibly to break down in the next month and the person comes to the uh, office or oh, sorry to your home repairs the car and goes away actually tesla does that i don't know if you know elon musk tesla so if the car breaks down he doesn't have to do anything all he has to do is report bug he just has to click report bug the data the entire error log goes to the uh, manufacturing unit wherever the debugging is happening within 15 20 minutes you know they create a patch and they reprogram your car and it starts moving that's the kind of technology so that is predictive analysis and then prescriptive analysis that's the next stage where the data that you gather it will take some time maybe a year or two or more based on the amount of data that's available where you use start building models for algorithms which will start prescribing what should be done if such an error happens right now such things are not there so this is the future where you can plan to move ahead because this is what is going to rule the technology and even you know rule the world with all the devices iot enabled okay and then adaptive analytics as i said automatically adapt to the latest changes any changes that have supposed to happen are happening 
and it will also tell you what changes that are required and they'll be you know implanted into the device so there's a huge convers uh, convergence of technologies so two things uh, one is you know you should be really good in technology that you develop basically the hardware part and good in mathematics where a lot of algorithms will you know come and uh, i think there'll be a huge career prospects for you in the algorithm space in the firmware development space and all these areas so be good at your you know skills that you're learning in your college and uh, and opportunities will just open up for you some of the references and uh, this is my email id we you know i'm from startoon labs as i told a two year old medical technology r and d development and manufacturing company a product is called as fizi which is for rehab and physiotherapy space so we usually take you know always at any given point of time i have one or two other uh, two three interns at at any given point of time so if anybody is uh, wanting to do research or pursue hardcore engineering uh, you know projects uh, and wants to really go into the depth of the subject and wants to give an attempt to that please feel free to contact me uh, i'll be very glad to uh, you know respond to your email so that's all from my side uh, i'm sorry if i took 2 3 minutes more than planned thank you so much friends Yeah. Four. Okay.